Hey everybody, Jack Clubs Painting here. Today we're going to be doing a Infinity model. This is one of the new Drew's Mercenaries. They just got some rules. We're going to be doing a quick and easy Infinity paint scheme for him. I'm going to be starting off with some primers. Uh, I like to use Steinal Res Primer. It's made by Badger Airbrush Company. Black, gray, and white. You can see those there. Really, really good primer to put through the airbrush. You can even uh, brush paint with it pretty easily. So we're gonna start priming this dude. And one thing you gotta remember when you're painting metal models is that uh, you need a really, really good prime coat to make everything kind of come together. So what I like to do is just make sure that while I'm priming this dude that I'm not building up too much primer in any one area and I'm not letting primer get too thin in any one area and have metal show through. So it's always a good idea to just kind of take your time and do a couple of passes with some really thin primer through the airbrush and make sure that it's not building up anywhere. All right, now we're gonna go to our gray primer and we're gonna start kind of layering in some highlights using that gray primer. You don't have to use primer, I just, that's what I do here. But uh, what we're doing is building up our initial highlights using the primer. And because we're gonna be doing kind of a carbon black, kind of military tactical black color scheme for most of this dude's model, uh, we're going to be building up all of our initial highlights with these primers before doing a uh, color tint over all three. So now we're coming in with a white and with the pure white you want to be really careful and layer it up really thin and don't just kind of like blast it on there because it's not going to look very good. We want to start bringing up our brightest points of the highlight with the white primer and just kind of layer it up until it gets as bright as we need it to. Otherwise, you're just gonna have these big white splotches that won't really fade into the other colors. That's not what you want. So you can see I'm just being really careful going around hitting where I think the highlights need to be the brightest, trying to kind of lock in that over the top anime art style that uh, Infinity is known for. Alright, so here he is, we've got our pre-shade built up, and now we're going to do a color tint over it using some Secret Weapon Tire Black. This is kind of a blue-green black paint, and then our secondary color is going to be red, but we're going to base that out with Mahogany Brown, and then our third color, which is going to be our contrast, is going to be some yellow ochre going up to a really bright kind of neon yellow. So I just wanted to show you guys those first so you can kind of get an idea of what our color scheme is going to be like. So now we're going to go to the tire black and mix it with quite a bit of flow improver so it's really transparent. It doesn't look transparent in the airbrush cup when we start spraying it on you'll see that we're basically just kind of color tinting that blue green black kind of carbon color over uh, all of our pre-shades and it's going to give him that really nice kind of military tactical look for all of his uh, armor and gear and stuff. Okay so the next step on our base colors here is going to be a light dry brush with some neutral gray. So this is going to save us a lot of time and if we're careful it'll come out looking really clean. I'm using a chisel tip dry brush that I got from slowfusegaming.com. Really really great dry brush. And 
I'm not really going super heavy with the dry brush, just very lightly kind of rubbing some of that pigment onto the model, getting all those little details picked out. And I say this is going to save us a bunch of time because I won't have to go back later and edge highlight any of this stuff. It's just going to pick out all those really nice details and all of our appreciated showing through. So um, this is kind of the final step that we really need to do for the military stuff. And now I'm going to hand base in our mahogany brown, which is going to be the base for our red colors. So going pretty minimal, we're just going to get this big kind of plate on his helmet. Just block that in with the mahogany brown. And we're going to get a couple of other little pieces here and there, like some little, uh, I don't know what they are, like little light things, LEDs on his, on his boot armor. We're just going to pick those out and this other little piece of gear uh, on his shoulder. And then we're going to airbrush flat red on top of those to get our highlights uniform. So we want those to be soft just like the rest of the highlights on the model. Try to be as careful as you can. I think I ended up getting a little bit of overspray on his shoulder and I had to go back and just kind of do steps one, two, and three over again to get those uh, covered up. But otherwise, like, use masking tape, use your finger, use a a note card or something like that to kind of mask those areas off if you're not comfortable with just uh, kind of freehanding it like this. Alright, so there's our helmet. You can see I got a little bit of that overspray. We'll fix that later. What I'm doing right now is just taking some more of that flat red and doing a little bit of a glaze workup on these other little pieces just because I thought they were a little too small to try to airbrush. And if you're careful and you know how to do some glazing, you can get those same soft highlights pretty easily, especially on really small bits like this. Just gotta hit it once or twice, let it dry, and then keep repeating that process until you get the color built up. It really doesn't take all that long. I think all in all, this step took me maybe 10 minutes or less just to get the reds built up on these little pieces. You know, you can even go over your airbrush stuff if you want to try to make it a little uniform. Just get those highlights faded out nice and soft. Now we're going to go up to some wild rider red from Citadel Paint as our final little red bit. And uh, you can see I kind of fixed that shoulder piece, and this time I'm smart and I'm going to use my thumb as a bit of a mask for the helmet just so I can get that really nice orange kind of pop going to that red and uh, just kind of airbrush that little section in there make sure I don't get any overspray get it nice and highlighted up and we're gonna be doing the same thing on our little bits just kind of coming in with that same wild rider red with the flow improver from the airbrush I just kind of dumped it out on the palette so that it has a nice glaze consistency to it. And we're just gonna glaze up a little bit of an extra highlight on those little small bits of red that are some of our highlight colors. All right, now we're going to switch to our contrast color, which is going to be this yellow ochre. And I don't want too much of this on the model, so I'm just going to paint this little antenna coming off of his helmet. Just base that in by hand, um, get the yellow ochre nice and solid on there. And, you know, it might take a couple of coats. Yellow ochre is a pretty good base color for almost any yellow workup that you're going to do. I like it a lot. It, it covers great and it goes on really thin. Don't have to really fight it too much like you do with, with other yellows. So we're just going to get that blocked in and then come in with Moon Yellow from Game Air as our airbrush highlight. And this is like really bright. It's similar to paints like Flash Gets Yellow where that yellow is just really, really vibrant and bright and just kind of start working up the airbrush highlight going towards the, the tip of that antenna, making sure I'm not hitting any other parts of the model with it. 
And then I'm gonna just add some ivory into that moon yellow in the airbrush cup, and that's gonna get us this really bright kind of yellow cream color that is gonna really make that yellow kind of stand out and pop, give it that kind of iridescent look. Now what we're gonna do to make our wash really clean is I'm just gonna hit this dude with some gloss varnish from Vallejo. I use all the Vallejo varnishes in my airbrush. I prefer those over using a uh, rattle can. So if, uh, if that's something you want, you can do that with the airbrush, or if you want to use rattle cans, you can uh, use some of those. Now we're going to put a wash on there with some Secret Weapon Soft Body Black, which in itself is a really thin wash that likes to flow everywhere. It's got kind of a detergent element to it, so it wants to just slide all over the model, which is really good. And since we gloss, co gloss coated the model, it's going to get into all those details really easily and not want to settle on any flat surfaces. But if it does, you can just wick it off like I'm doing here on the, uh, the helmet areas, just making sure I don't have any black spots on there. And then once that's dry, we're going to hit it with a matte varnish so we can keep on painting. All right, now we're gonna go to some Ulthwan Gray from Citadel. It's a really bright, uh, almost gray-white color and very lightly dry brush again over some of the details that may have gotten kind of washed down by our uh, soft body black, just to pick those points out. Like not going super crazy with it, just wanna get all those little tiny details on his tactical gear popped out using that so that way we don't have to edge highlight a bunch of stuff. And then I'm going to come in with an edge highlight on our red bits with some of this Wild Rider Red. And it's going to be a little bit more vibrant than when we glazed it on there. So it still works as an edge highlight to kind of pick out those hard edges on his, uh, I don't know what this is, like some kind of communications device, maybe a, a walkie-talkie or something. And uh, get those details popped out and also get some of the hard edges on his little helmet plate there to, to pick those details out. Alright, so what I'm going to do here is take our Wild Rider Red and I'm going to thin it down even more than it already is to where it's just super, super thin and kind of come in and very lightly scribe in some of those kind of scratch marks that you see on a lot of Infinity stuff get kind of either shine lines or scratch lines or whatever you want to call them. And they're going to be fairly subtle, um, which is Part of that technique is you just want to scribe those little lines in with the same color as your edge highlight, which is why I thinned it down so much so that it's not going to be like really, really vibrant. It's going to be kind of semi-transparent as little scratches in the paint. And then I'm going to be edge highlighting some of these other things with ivory, which is going to really make it pop out and get those hard points to shine up a little bit. Just picking out those details in the brighter colors and um, for our metallic surfaces like our gun and things like that I'm just going to do some little dot highlights on some of the hard points to kind of lock in that little carbon metal effect that you see a lot of in Infinity. Alright, now we're gonna work on his base. I'm gonna do some dark gray green from Vallejo Mecha Color. It's a kind of an interesting color. I thought it would work well as kind of a different style of uh, asphalt coloring. So it's not just black on black with the color scheme. I want it to kind of contrast a little bit. We're just gonna do that as kind of the uh, asphalt tarmac kind of surface that he's standing on. Just block that in. 
Make sure it's nice and solid on there. And then we're going to do some airbrushing. I'm using some of my Tamiya masking tape here and we're just going to mask off a straight line, kind of like a, a road stripe or a hazard stripe or, you know, like something you would see on some kind of like maybe a landing field or a city street or a military complex or road, anything like that. Just that's kind of what we're doing. Just gonna hit that with the airbrush and kind of not make it super super opaque because we do want it to look like paint on the road that's kind of faded a little bit over time. Just want to lock it in right there. And then we're gonna wash it with Athonian Camo Shade from Citadel. It's a kind of a greenish brown wash. Just gonna help make this look a little different. Maybe sci-fi or maybe it's like an alien world or something. You know. Drew's mercs get up to all sorts of stuff, so we're not really sure where he's at. Alright, to finish the base off, we're just going to dry brush it with a little bit of Death Guard Green, which is going to pick out all that little texture paint pumice and stuff on the ground, really lock it in as some kind of asphalt terrain. Just pick out the detail a little bit more. It'll it'll dry brush over that yellow stripe a little bit, make it look a little weathered. Just super easy. Then we're gonna paint the base with some just black from model color, just regular old black. This is one of my favorite paints to do this kind of stuff. Dries pretty bad and paints on great. All right, here he is. Uh, super quick and easy, really clean looking Infinity workup. I'm calling my Truze Bayroom Force the Red Devils. So I wanted to do kind of a minimalist color scheme with them so I can get them painted up pretty quickly. You can see the uh, black tactical armor and then the little red accent colors just make them look a little unique and different compared to the normal box art stuff. And here's some finished studio photos of them you can look at. If you guys like this Infinity tutorial, uh, tell me in the comments below and I can do some more of them since uh, most of my channel stuff previously has been 40k. I'd like to do more Infinity for you guys. And also remember to follow me on Facebook under the Jack Club's Painting and uh, catch me on Twitch. I stream four nights a week doing live shows. It's really fun. Make sure to come check it out and I'll catch you guys next time.